What's up fellow Mobis? This is Max from Moby Dick and Corby. Uh, today we have a new episode of Talks, which is in continuation of the Talks conference, a format where we talk with creatives about their process, life and yeah, design education. Today we have Rafael Bernardo with us. He published a book, Be Water My Friend, and we will be talking about transformation, change and his creative process and uh, journey. So please stay along, give us a like, subscribe, because we have a lot more videos coming up with interesting and cool people, and we would love to have you here. I think I'm not so scared of change because a lot mm -hmm. changed in, in mm -hmm. my life. Like I was born in, in Stuttgart, Germany. For three years, my parents moved to the Caribbean. I lived there for six years, went to a French school, mm -hmm. then we moved to uh, uh, Lower Bavaria, um, spent a year in the US, also with the culture. My, my father is German, my mother is uh, mm -hmm. Brazilian, and so um, it's... Um, maybe I'm not scared of change because I simply don't know what is possible. No, also I don't, I don't think about... Um, I have an idea and then, oh, I, that, that would, won't work. It's more like, is it possible? To, to what degree is it possible? What am I able to do? And um, this was uh, mm -hmm. also in my like um, uh, professional career, always a driving force. Because um, after my studies um, at uh, the HFG in Schwibschmund and uh, uh, The Hague and uh, the Royal Academy, um, I started to work at Büro Linientreu, where uh, they did uh, um, the magazine for Porsche. Mm -hmm. And I also did my intern there. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, what's the best school for typography and everything. Mm -hmm. Carsten is so strict and it's, it's, I'm so thank thankful. No, but also there no, it was really hard and all these expectations. And he's seeing something that I don't see. And, and he can make a layout so much faster work than I do. And why and why and why? But at a certain point, I, I noticed, okay, I don't want only I don't only want to do magazines. Mm -hmm. So I started looking, what do I want to do? Mm -hmm. And so my next station was, okay, I changed the city. I didn't want to stay in Stuttgart anymore. Um, I moved to uh, Munich and worked at Martin Kaczynski, uh, a big corporate uh, agency that um, uh, expresses in everything they do this whole branding thing you have to see their their building their studio their office it's and um how they yeah yeah they also believe a lot <laughs> transformation <laughs> and uh, <laughs> nah, nah. and um but there was also the point okay there, there was a limitation i wasn't able to decide things i wasn't able to change uh a claim or the direction we're going with the client, even though I might have noticed during my work, hey, maybe we should ask the client. We have the chance to change something, mm -hmm. but um, it, it was out of my responsibility and it was kind of um, um, limiting. No, it, it hold, I felt like uh, it hold me back. And uh, creativity is a lot about movement, and, mm -hmm. or uh, for me at least. and. Uh, so also there was the, the, at the end, okay, I'm limited. I want to create change. And at that time, um, um, with uh, two of my, my, my friends, um, we started a studio and it was also like, um, we're going to do everything different. Mm -hmm. We're going to have the, the, mm -hmm. the commercial work. We're going to have a, a creative personal work and we're going to try to uh, make it real. Mm -hmm. huh? Because at that time, um, a lot of it was very usual to whine about uh, not being able to do what you want mm -hmm. the client projects and everything and so uh, we said okay we're gonna open up this space for ourselves and um, yeah this went well for for seven years also like grew had people working for us and interns and everything but um after a time i noticed also that there were new limitations that it's um i didn't want to I know this time it was pushing me towards somewhere uh, uh, to, to become a, a big agency. Mm -hmm. I noticed um, how on the one side I, uh, I wanted to work creatively, graphic design and everything. And on the other side I noticed also um, that I, the people around me would, weren't working in a way that I would mm -hmm. 
feel like no, I had too much pressure on creating output and, and doing the things. And um, at the same time, like it would be logical to take a step back and do more organizational mm -hmm. stuff and uh, only strategic impulse because I've taught also in university. I, I know how to work with people. That's not the thing, but um, uh, yeah, I, I noticed that it's, it's, it's not going to a direction that I want. Like there were um, decisions I couldn't take for myself that I had to uh, discuss. And um, uh, there were so many reasons, other reasons as well, that were difficult. Um, uh, but it was because you said change, why change is difficult. But sometimes it's also, it, it's more difficult to stay where you are. Sometimes it's mandatory. And I mean, for, for me, I think one of the most important points then in a situation like this is that you actually give yourself the room to reflect and being able to look into the mirror, you know? Yeah. And I think that is sometimes really hard to do because once you're in the machinery, things are happening in a fast pace, you sometimes don't have the ability to actually look at yourself from outside and see, ah, okay, this is how it's actually moving and what are my goals personally? And maybe also professionally, obviously. And, you know, to always be super clear about where you want to go and, you know, have that constant, you know, repetition of reflection, that is something which is very good hygiene, I would say, for, you know, taking change um, very, you know, heavy to the, into the heart or whatever. And um, that is also something we were talking a lot about at Moby Dick. We think a lot about that because it's also like a vento or something, you know, a, a channel basically where you can um, talk also about emotions, fears, and, you know, the things where you want to go. And um, I think it's also important to, to talk a little bit about the tool sets probably you can use for all those things. For instance, here we, we introduced a new thing, which is basically only a meeting. It's called a retrospective. But once every month, each team comes together and they basically share what went good, you know, uh, what didn't uh, went well and um, what we can make better maybe in the future. And it, it sounds so easy and a little bit maybe strange or cringy in the beginning, but actually opening up that realm is so cool, so important. People can share um, on a really emotional level um, things, but also quite you know, fundamental things which are not working well. And um, even as someone who is leading the team, you um, immediately have the possibility to actually get feedback also directly from the team. Because I think also working in a team, sometimes it's, it's hard to find that moment where you say like, hey, listen, I don't know, Corby or Max or Raphael, I, I think what you did there, I didn't like that that much or that hurt my feelings or I don't know, I think we should have gone a different direction. And like, where's the, where's the moment in, you know, a rocket ship basically <laughs> where you do that in between. So I think we have to do that on, you know, with tool sets and, you know, set basically the stage for reflection in a way that people feel comfortable also sharing that. And, you know, you, you talked a lot about, um, how you drove change in your life and so on. And I think that's like super interesting how you always were so aware of where you want to go in a way. I mean, probably you were talking about a large time span. You know, uh, uh, no, 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 but you have but absolutely the wrong impression. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. No, it's, it's, it's I would, I would, I would just, okay. No, 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 no. <laughs> I would I would use the same uh, title that you have for your meeting. It's retrospective. Yeah. It's looking back. That's a difficult. That's that's like the tricky part because when we creativity, why is it possible? Um, it's because of two things. We can look into the past. We can ask ourselves why, and um, we can look into the future and ask what if, and and that's. No, that makes life difficult. If you wouldn't have these, take these two options away and life would be paradise. It's interesting because, you know, in Buddhism, for instance, or in general in meditation or whatever, or existentialism, um, it's always about this idea of, you know, being in a moment and actually reducing those two factors, future and past. 
for instance. And I mean, just yesterday I wrote, uh, read about uh, Indra, which is in Hinduism, the idea of everything being connected through a network. And um, we basically just are the intersection of two lines where something connects. And then, you know, we embody in this place and become a materialized thing. But actually, we don't really exist. We are just a connection of things. We are connected with everything, but we all are also everything. And yeah, that would be the perfect idea of, you know, talking about the now and, you know, trying to be there. And as you said in the beginning, yeah, it's, not, it's not it's not so easy. It's not so easy because it's it's kind of the trick is not to worry, because if you look into the past, uh, you ask why and you worry, you're scared. If you look into the future and ask what if and you worry, you're scared. And it's also like every situation. Um, if you know why you're doing it, hmm. what's the outcome for the future? Hmm. No, so you're actually really looking into the future. Um, or if you have a garden and you're growing fruits or whatever, you have to also understand the past to know, okay, it's not ripe yet or here happened this. So it, it's throw, to throw these two directions away wouldn't be right. I just wonder like, do we always have to be, you know, joyful for our future or painful for our future um, that we think we have to think about change? And, for, you know, for me, this is super inspiring to just think about, you know, a ritual which I can do every month or so to think about, you know, how I can reflect about myself and, you know, what change can do to myself and how I can grow and so on. Um, but, you know, if you are reacting to things, I would say those two emotions are the strongest. That's right, but I think the difference between pain as a driver or happiness as a driver is that um, pain, if, if you feel like sad or you feel uncomfortable with a situation, that directly drives change. But um, happiness, you have to reflect. I mean, you're not changing because you're happy, right? That's true, in a way, definitely. And on the other hand... Or you want more. Happy, no, yeah, that's what happened with you. Mm -hmm. you. You noticed what makes you happy? and then drives you to get more of it. If you have pain, I mean, I don't know, it, it depends because for example, okay, I mean, it's not, I'm, I'm not a bodybuilder or I don't do fitness, but um, if you do that, you want a certain kind of pain. It's, it's a feedback that mm -hmm. you've done your exercise in the right mm -hmm. way. And um, also if you buy something nice for yourself or equipment or whatever, and costs a lot of money, there's also some kind of pain mm -hmm. involved. Mm -hmm. Um, and um, one thing that I, uh, uh, it's, it's it had a little bit a different level, but it's um, like the, the, the sweetness and the bitterness of life. You know? it's, it's on the one thing you have the possibility, if you focus on the bitterness, you're going to find bitterness. You know? if, you, if, you, if you think the world is a dangerous place, you're going to see danger everywhere. And um, one thing that I noticed that um, because as long as you're thinking or imagining, nothing really happens. No? So it's, you're not contributing to what you're emotionally related to or what you envision. No? And so um, you have to do things. And it's, um, as we said before, you don't know the outcome, but there are always two things that hit you, bitterness and sweetness. And the, 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 the bigger the things are that you get into movement, the more sweetness, the more bitterness. So it's, it's if you start to avoid the bitterness, you're going to re restrict yourself and experiencing more joy. Mm -hmm. And so it's, 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 it's maybe this pain is also a part of a, a feedback that you're going somewhere or a, a studio. There's so many good design studios. And if there's a competition, there's only going to be one winner. But that's, that's why there's this idea of envisioning pain as well. And, and that's like a thing which is used in nihilism, for instance, where you try to think about the worst things that could actually happen to you. For instance, losing, I don't know, your family or a friend or losing this client and so on. And then actually thinking about all of those things which can happen. And at the beginning, if you think about it, it sounds a little bit weird and you think like, oh, that's so negative. But it's just about envisioning the maximum of um, pain you could actually experience and then 
actually then going back and saying like, wow, the life I have right now is so good. <laughs> I mean, like all those things could happen to me, but they don't. And I'm here at the safe place. And at the same time, once something super bad happens, you're already prepared for that. And another thing is, another thing if you really try to envision worst case scenarios is that when they happen, you're not as shocked. It, it, mm -hmm. It's, it's mm -hmm. not, uh, athletes, they, they, they envision certain um, uh, routines of movements um, a million times in their head before they go out to really do it. And, and uh, your body or, or your brain mm. doesn't really know the difference. So it's, it's kind of mm. in between. And um, so if, if you, you, yeah, with the pain, um, the, the aspects in our life or in our job that we don't want to look at, that's where the highest potentials are. No, so it's also there kind of um, the pain that you can't look there. No, you want to put your eyes away, but it's, it's, all, it's an indicator. But what you find at the end is the sweetness because you solved the problem. You say, okay, the last three years we've always been doing this and we thought it's important, but it's actually doing the exact opposite. You know, and so it's, it's, it's mm -hmm. kind of... Um, uh, yeah, I think this balance and, and the more movement, the more you get out there, the more both of the things are going to hit you. Okay. Like all the people that are admired out there, they have so many haters. And it, they're still people and they have to read all these comments or a few that they're going to they read. It, it, it does something to you. And it's um, if you want to avoid it, you're also going to restrict yourself from the other side. So it's no, it's it's kind of. What are the things that you can change and what are the things you can't change? Mm -hmm. But you were saying balance and I think that's a super important word. It's balance between two poles, but at the same time, those poles are really connected. <laughs> and, I'm, and pain and joy, they kind of are interlinked so, so much and that's something you have to experience, I think, in a certain way as well. This balance is not a stable status. Balance is a moving, moving uh, movement. As, mm -hmm. no, it's, it's, that's what you said, the, yeah. the two poles are extreme. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if mm -hmm. you try to find a middle point, it's, you use a lot of energy. But if you, if you manage to balance them both with, the, with each other, no? As a, we want, that's what I'm also with mm -hmm. cleaning up everything, having a tidy, you want to, to believe, to make yourself believe you, you trick time. And we want this one single state where happiness, joy, and everything happens, but um, in the way one imagines it to be, I'm not sure if somebody ever experienced it. But that's the reason also why people do, for instance, Iron Man. I mean, I read about this event, which is basically an Iron Man three times. It's more than 100 kilometers, I think, um, of running through the desert and people die during this event. That's insane. And it was about this woman who actually lost a leg and did it. And she didn't get to the finish line, but she pushed, I mean, she had a prosthesis obviously, oh, yeah. but she pushed herself that far. And she said like, you know, I want to actually experience pain to get, um, you know, the feeling of joy once I'm back in my normal life in a way. And that touches on that base. Mm -hmm. And I think when you're younger, it's just important to think about, you know, things which inflict pain in a way that they also can help you to grow and to you know have more joy on other parts. And I mean, we were talking in between a little bit about, for instance, perfection and night shifts. And I think it's an, a nice topic because you know, in the creative industry, you always have those moments where you basically create and become. You come in the movement in the joyful, you know, working space, I guess. And then maybe you do a night shift one, two, three, but at a certain point, it becomes so hard. <laughs> that uh, you have to think about, you know, how you can get out of there again. But we were also talking about how basically it can push you forward. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's important to, to acknowledge the impulses that we feel, no? be it something, oh, that could be interesting. I would like to try that or something uncomfortable. You know, like I really need to exercise more. I have to look more how I'm eating. It's not good. My sleeping rhythm, you know, it's 
so it's it's I think it's always it's really difficult because um, the way it works for you um, doesn't work for anybody else. Mm. So you 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 do not have the possibility to ask somebody, "Am I doing it right? Am I on the right path?" And so with with everything that we don't know, or okay, accept everything that you don't know, and accept everything that you feel or understand. I think there's there's a, a big disbalance. We try to 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 control or handle more things outside of us, where we don't. It's only an illusion mm -hmm. to control other people or a situation or so. Um, the only space where we can take control in a way of uh, intentional uh, uh, impulse um, is inside. You know, what's how do I prepare myself for a situation? How do I finish a situation? Um, uh, really, uh, after an important talk or uh, you have uh, somebody who applies for a job, mm -hmm. uh, okay, you find all the answers inside of you. Uh, would it be the right person? Da, 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 da. Here's the point. Oh, I didn't ask that. I'm going to send an email with this last question. You know, it's and, and that, that's something where we, when we find limitations, I mean, you said uh, you find everything inside of you, but uh, I mean, as you said, not every uh, solution works for everyone. For me, for instance, it's way more important to actually open up and to be vulnerable and to make situations where other people and I come together on a, on the same level, on you know a baseline where we can be completely open, but at the same time respectful, and you know have this conversation at something super valuable and yeah, but holy in a way. To control it. No, no, that's what I'm actually um, uh, I'm trying to, you know, create a space where, you know, you can open up in a way. That's maybe okay, that's controlling, but I would feel it's more something like creating a tool set for yourself where you can, you know, basically work on this on an imminent or on an, on a, on a space which works more often, you know. Maybe why it's so difficult. We, we want to change and we, we figure out where we have to put in the work. But so often in life, from my experience, big changes came from parts that I changed in other aspects of my life. Like um, uh, three years I, I tried to learn skateboarding. <laughs> <laughs> How did that work? Very bad. <laughs> because um, I think it's, it's, it's really... Uh, 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 a big benefit to do it in your young age because your your bones, your muscle mm -hmm. are it's easier for them to learn movements and everything. But still, um, uh, it changed my way uh, uh, how I confront conflicts mm -hmm. or avoid conflicts because it's kind of um, you have the idea what's supposed to happen and you don't know and you're not gonna find out if you don't do it. And then kind of like handling the pain. Um, being angry because you know that you have to do it this way and you didn't do it and you know so, but, but it's, it's it's it really changed also the way i talk to to my clients no it's it's like one of the difficult things is to learn how to say no in a way that you mean it in a way that you're not stabbing the other or taking something away but really okay there's a line you know and it's it's saying no and then let's see what happens and usually the other side is not as offended as you would assume. And it, it shifts more on a respect and trust level because, ah, okay, there's a, there's a border limit. I didn't know mm -hmm, about it. Mm -hmm. Thanks that you told me. I thought it, yeah, nothing but. So, and. Um, How do you say no to a client? I would be very interested in that. <laughs> like, maybe do you have a situation lately where that happened? Like, can you. Yeah, we didn't agree on that on the, on the uh, estimate. Yeah. It's, I, I like the idea. We didn't think of it now. That's creativity, that new things come up. Think about it if it's really an important uh, aspect and we'll do something else. But for the setting that we have now, um, I didn't plan it in. As a, mm -hmm. yeah, as a, yeah, it's yeah. not in a budget. And yeah. No. Yeah. 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 How did they react? That's what I mean with respect, because I know it's it's because it's difficult also to. Um, I've stopped printing machines. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> that's a big no. Yeah. 
you know? The printers mm -hmm. have all the, the, the production one after the other one. And then the, there was a problem and it's not working out. It was at the beginning. It was a, um, a project for uh, Rosenthal. Mm -hmm. And um, we wanted to make the big, biggest possible book. And uh, according to the paper, we figured out what's the maximum size. And uh, the pages were really all across. Now, we filled everything. And uh, the paper was nice and everything. And we had uh, three spot colors. No? Mm -hmm. But now what happened? Because of the humidity in the air, also the humidity of the color, mm -hmm. um, the paper went in, was soaked in color, and just like a dough, when you roll it out, the edges went in. So you have a, a black um, plane, and in there is neon red or neon green type. Mm -hmm. It didn't fit at the end. It fitted everywhere in the middle. Oh, wow. Well. You know? Mm -hmm. And then it's kind of like, okay, if these pages don't work. <laughs> 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 no? uh, um, and also there, it's, it's, yeah, responsibility to, because that's what I mean. It's, it's, or the difference is how you say the no, the, the tonality. No? If you're kind of, oh, you want too much. No. Nobody likes to hear that. Mm -hmm. But kind of like, don't do that, or it's not possible. Is it possible? No, I can't do anything. Yeah. You know, it's, 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 I'm not trying to figure, that's what and I mean. It, Things it, that I can't change, I don't try to change. But that's the thing, you know, in the, in, especially in the beginning, you think like, okay, everything has to be possible. And if the client suddenly asks me something, um, you know, I love this project so much. I want to make it happen. I, yeah, I can do obviously a night shift more and you know, it would be possible. Yeah, of course I could do it. You know, all those things happening in your head and you know, also just always thinking, I mean, for me, just thinking about this 80, 20 rule where you think like, ah, with, you know, 80% I actually also can achieve the goal and maybe, you know, do I really have to do this and that night shift again? Do we really need this feature? For instance, in our realm, we have a quite often with websites, you know, we do, do those crazy designs and then we have um, 20 sections which are almost the same but not the same and, and the programming is like a complete chaos because you have to do everything individually and then just thinking about, ah, okay, we can reduce the stress actually. We can, you know, have the same information transmitted through uh, the same uh, section here and there and there. And it will actually not lessen the project. It will make it faster, easier to do. Everyone will be happy in the end. And it has the same effect um, to the users. And um, yeah, I think that is something important to keep in mind that actually we as designers are also consultants for the client. And you know, we should act as those and say like, ah, what is actually your goal? You want to achieve this and that and that. And your idea is cool, but you know, we can have this idea and it has the same effect and it's actually two times as fast. Don't you want to be done faster? You know, actually, I think it's about pick your battles. I mean, it's definitely worth for some, so some sections or for some, I don't know, like, um, ideas to like really put in the work and do the night shifts. But as you said, like, like sections, which are like just, um, just variants or, or there's some small changes. I mean, does it really need to be like the night shift for that? Leave it, put more of the work into like maybe the hero section, which is really seen by, by a lot of people and, and, and it's really worth to put the work in I, there. I yeah, think that it, it has to do with um, perfection, just um, real quick, because you kind of inflict uh, this fear on top of you where you think like, ah, it's not good enough. That's why I have to push more. And I think I'm coming from a point where I say like, I could push more, but I think it is already 100% good and it is actually good enough and I want to do 10 more projects <laughs> this year. <laughs> yeah, but that's, that's healthy. That's healthy. And I, and I think on a, uh, uh, it's important to ask this question, is a night shift necessary? Yeah. Because 9 out of 10 times you're going to say no, but this one time mm -hmm. you know why it's necessary. And, 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 and so to... Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's really hard to, to have like a s s fixed plan that always works. You, there's, you can't make a blueprint for a project and do the same project, a website, a book, an exhibition, 
and the next one use the same blueprint. It doesn't work. But you need tools for that. And I think... You know, yeah, but people... And you think, have to feel it. Yeah, yeah. But what I'm saying that this people wish to have this blueprint. Yeah. And you can build it, mm -hmm. but you can never use it again. Yeah. It, it has to be a tool set which is, I think, flexible. And I think that's the perfect segue also to your book again, which I actually want to show uh, towards the camera here. <laughs> um, and I mean, you, you took, it, it took five years, right, to create this masterpiece, I would say. Well, to fill all the works that, it, that are displayed in the work. As I said, five years ago, I, I started my Be Water My Friend journey. Um, and, and at the same time as I dropped out the old studio and started uh, Rafael Bernardo Branding Communication. And um, uh, yeah, so the, the creative work was really to explore my graphic range. Mm -hmm. It was, a, I had a big, a big um, challenge or problem or however you want to uh, phrase it, that um, when I dropped out the old studio, um, I didn't have any uh, design identity anymore. Mm -hmm. I didn't know who I was, no, because it, it's always who you are is not only how you feel, but also uh, the, the feedback from the surrounding. No, the, yeah. And um, so since I, yeah, it was this whole break free uh, uh, motivational mm -hmm. thing and then, okay, let's start doing uh, artwork just to, mm -hmm. to get it out. You have to find a new way of express yourself no? because it's, 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 the, the, the game has completely changed, but I don't know in which direction. I only knew a few things that I liked. So at the beginning, one of the first project was uh, for uh, 100 for 10. Mm -hmm. It's a project by uh, Melville um, Brand Design. They're also in here in Munich. And, and it's 100 pages. And it's kind of, okay, I have to fill it. Mm -hmm. you know? And it's doing stuff, doing stuff. Okay, that's not get, coming into the book. Doing more stuff, more stuff, and, and, and st having an exhibition. And yeah. When did you decide that it was good enough to be published? Because I mean, five years is a super long time. On the one was it for the yeah. book? I, 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 okay, that, the one thing was the creative journey. Then um, three years it, uh, uh, it took me to develop the methodology mm -hmm. with this idea context in the outside, motivation in the center, mm -hmm. and process connecting both layers. And the methodology is just tools, three tools for these layers. But um, the book itself uh, uh, took me one year. Yeah, okay. I mean, um, the hard drive is um, <laughs> getting fuller and fuller, actually. Um, I think it's time to wrap this up. It was super nice to have you here. I really enjoyed the talk. But I want to plug your book even more. So it's available where? Where can I buy this? How much is it? Um, Tell us all about it. Um, it's uh, 34 euros. It's, um, you can order it online, either directly at the uh, publishers, slanted publishers, but you also find it at uh, Hugendubel, for example, or Amazon. The, the, the paper I used is recycled paper. So since water is a cycle, I wanted also to have here this uh, cyclic aspect in it. And um, yeah, yeah, so also this the contents, the, uh, the structures that I have in there, I, um, we didn't talk about it, but I started uh, giving workshops. Okay. Mm. So there's um, a, a water tasting that's only an afternoon for hours. So you, um, uh, the idea is you bring your topic and it has to be uh, either in the field of uh, stream flow, mm -hmm. like everything, like how a project feels from the beginning to the end that you keep this vibe or work with it. And the other aspect is uh, the team flow. How do you understand each other in a team, like uh, in a, a sports team, you just throw a, a look behind your shoulder, start running and you get the ball exactly where you want to have it. And um, so that's uh, out of these two fields. And um, it works quite well to, to, to have this mix of topics. And then I start going through the three tools for context, motivation and process and use these examples to display how it works, what you can do. And um, yeah, it, the nice thing that I didn't anticipate was uh, really that people started giving feedback to each other mm. they were with their minds and the other topics and mm -hmm. everything. And it's a, uh, yeah, became a very nice uh, uh, exchange. Mm -hmm. So that's the water tasting. Mm -hmm. And there is uh, uh, the deep dive, because then two weeks on, uh, two days on the weekend, um, where you can more get into depth, 
have more uh, work for yourself where you, or in groups where you can work on more things. And um, yeah, so that's uh, the new change. No? Ooh, cool. Exciting. Yeah. Okay. Cool, man. Yes, it was a blast to have you. And uh, I think we have to do a sequel. To yeah, this. really yeah. enjoy. It's it's such a nice space, and it's also like um, uh, um you've also to to see how you guys have changed over the time, and uh, uh, not only in size, but but also in the the different projects that you did and everything. This book wasn't uh, uh, for Japan. Mm -hmm. Also, mm -hmm. yeah, it's 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 really, and I think it's. Um, nice to to see people who don't try to do one thing you know like if the in the the uh, medical or pharma direction always it's the same and repeat and repeat mm -hmm. but really to to do all those different things and events and now with all this 3d virtual space and it's it's, it's really uh, um, um, i'm very happy for you guys that your team is working no? that you're enjoying the time you're having together and what you created with uh, moby dick and uh, now here, this new coffee table series. It's even, yeah, it's, it's it's. I think it's very refreshing. I think more people could be doing this kind of. Yeah, stuff. that's why we also thought now it's really a good time to and you know have conversations with guests, and uh, we want to do a lot more in this direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was super nice having you, man. <gasps> One more thing. Hey guys, thank you very much for tuning in. Please make sure to like, subscribe to our channel, and uh, stay tuned for the next episode. Bye. <laughs>